along with my uh, solar panels. I've had this wind turbine. It's a thousand watts with 48 volts. Uh, it's powering up my shed. I used to have a plasma cam cutter. Well, I still do, but I don't use it as much. And uh, cut a lot of metal, metal fabricating. That's where plasma art came from. This is the one I had for the motorhome. Uh, actually, a fifth wheel at the time when I go to Arizona, but <laughs> Arizona doesn't really get much wind, except for the what are they, hibobs or whatever they call them. So I'm going to put this back up, connect this to my uh, cable goes in here, but I don't have it run yet. I did, but I took it out so it stays dry, and uh, connect it to my solar panels. That's 48 volt also, uh, but until I get a controller that does solar and wind, you can't hook a wind turbine up to um, a solar controller because there would be no brake on it. So you have to have a brake or a dump valve um, where solar panels don't need that. The controller does that all for you, but they do sell a controller that's solar and wind. So my solar panel control box is right here. And you open it up and you'll see one, two, three, four inverters. These are grid ties, so they plug into 110. Uh, you could do 220, 240. It says 110, 240. I have it in 110. Uh, I'm thinking about switching it over to 240. And then that's the stop switch, what if I wanted to manually stop it? And then it has the dump valves. And then should be 48 volts coming out of this is turning. Shut itself off if, the, if you unplug the 110. Okay. <laughs> the wind stopped again. <laughs> Just my luck. I live on an escarpment and it's either too windy or not windy enough. Uh, you could always hear the wind turbine when it's turning. It makes a humming noise through the shed because I actually have it spent it in the ground and then the guy wires One of the guy wires hits the shed and so it vibrates when it's on so right now I don't hear but I just had 38 and 44 45 on each of those three legs But we live in such a windy area here that this thing's constantly tripping. So I put it on a timer uh, that as soon as it lost power and then gained power, it would sense it and about five minutes later it would start up again. But if the wind stays really high after the third time, it just shuts off until I reset it, which I can do manually from the house. Oops, sorry about my thumb. Huh, you realize it. So, this company is from the Netherlands. I bought this years ago from Harbor Freight. It was on clearance. Um, my plans were, a lot of times where we camp out, there would be water. And I was going to put a paddle down here. And create my own electricity through the paddle. I still haven't figured out. I don't live in there or stream at home, but the only thing I thought about doing was putting a pulley on here and getting one of the wind turbines uh, to just turn this thing for the power. But yeah, I have the solar panels, the wind turbine, 
And then, uh, like I said, the other small the turn pipe for the motorhome or the shed or the fifth wheel. And this panel was from the motorhome fifth wheel turbine. And like I said, I hit out in Arizona. Uh, got full of sand, screwed things up. So I had to kind of rebuild it. And uh, so here's your dump load bulb. And then on this one's a stop switch too, so if you can manually stop it if you wanted to. So I'm doing away with this and get one of those solar wind MPVT controllers. And it'll be just in one box. I won't have to worry about any of this stuff here. But this it does work. And uh, this does SWEA in the Netherlands it is a good company. Back when I bought these they uh, weren't UL listed, so uh, you really couldn't sell these here in the States. So as long as there's 110, 220 connected to this or my wind turbine on my shed, the power stays on. As soon as the power goes out, they quit producing power so the linemen down the road don't get electrocuted or uh, any of that stuff. So it's a safety feature. You can see my big wind turbine tripped from too windy today. So just come down here and just reset it. And start going. So Sometimes that last bust and then it trips it. And you can see it's barely turning. Look at that storm coming up from the southwest. Leave it going. It's actually going. Oh, there it goes. It's starting. We got 36, 37. So this one. 37. And it just clicked because it went too fast. Ah. It's very windy today. Uh, so I'll probably end up leaving it off. Most of the time in the winter, I would say January, February, March, it gets very windy on this escarpment here in Sanborn, New York. So we're on the middle as it comes down the hill plateaus a little bit, that's where we're at, and, and it, we get some violent storms, I mean, shingles all the time losing on my roof of my house, my gazebo, I think I went through three gazebos, that screen room you saw on the side of my shed that used to be on my house, blew the roof off of that, it's really windy down here. Oh, and my solar panels, Good job, I got my electric bikes. These bad boys are powerful, especially the white and black one. I stepped through for my wife. Still got the same motor and battery, but uh, you could tweak these down, tweak them off. So the big ones tweaked up as powerful as it would go. Uh, the only thing I wish I had was the uh, 21 speed or 15 speed, it's only seven, so my legs are still powerful enough that once they get to the top of the escarpment, I really don't need battery, but seven gears isn't enough. All of a sudden, my legs are spinning so fast, it's like, you know, I'm coming down the hill. And of course, my little electric lawnmower is just getting the dog area over an acre of property, so it's a Husqvarna. Uh, 
and then my diesel uh, heat heater. I can go either in a motorhome, the wheel, and it's the outside, or just leave it in the shed here and heats up the shed pretty good. But sorry for the mess, but living in the country, I'm constantly ripping this stuff apart because of mice. Uh, I had to leave all my panels off, my electric panels, because they don't. One day I didn't have electricity, I took my panel off and it was head to toe in uh, a mice nest. And of course they were chewing everything. And same thing with my uh, welders. I have to leave the lids off my welders when I'm not using them so the mice don't build in them. 